Okay, so the title. Continue. Um, the title of our study is The Impact of COVID-19 in Older Adults in Rural Alabama, which is pretty long and pretty specific, but uh, it is a, a small subset. Um, this is me and my mentor, Dr. Smith. So I am an undergraduate biology student. I'm pre-med and I have a minor in chemistry and psychology. I plan to graduate in spring and I just got done applying to medical school. Uh, Dr. Smith, if you want to introduce yourself real quick. I'm Dr. Lenore Smith. I'm an assistant professor um, in the College of Nursing and my research focus is on um, gerontology and um, improving cognition in older adults. Um, and I um, have a geriatric background in nursing. Um, since this is for mostly um, high school students, gerontology is the study of older adults or um, elders and that kind of thing. So an abstract is the pretty much summary of your research. So this is our whole abstract, but the main goal of our study is to contribute data and conclusions about the correlation between social isolation, loneliness, and physical and psychological health in older adults in rural Alabama. So we did this by mailing surveys and having them returned to us. Um, also, just a quick explanation of some terms. Social isolation just means not being around others. So in a time such as this with COVID-19 and stuff, a lot of older adults are more socially isolated than they were before, just for health reasons and safety purposes. Loneliness is different than social isolation in that it's how you feel about your relationships with others. So you can be socially isolated and not be lonely. You can be very happy with that. If you're a hermit that lives in a cave somewhere, but that's your dream, you may not be lonely, but you are socially isolated. And the opposite can be true. You can be lonely and not socially isolated. You can be lonely and unhappy with your relationships in a crowd full of people. Um, physical and psychological health are different in that physical health is going to be your physical ability to get up out of bed, your physical health and um, blood pressure, BMI, uh, BMI being uh, body mass index, and it's just a measurement of your height and weight. Um, psychological health is going to be more um, mental health, so depression, anxiety, all that kind of stuff. We actually measured that in this study by using a um, depression scale in the survey. So if Dr. Smith wants to explain real quick um, what a depression scale is. Um, the depression scale, and there are several out there, but just um, has questions that are based on a Likert scale um, that ask specific questions about certain aspects of a person's life, such as um, how often they go out of the house, how often do they feel worthless, um, how often do they feel happy or sad, uh, and then the scores are totaled, and um, the score then is based, the, the rate of depression then um, is geared toward high or low, and if it's high, a high score, then they are more likely depressed. Um, even if it's lower, then obviously they aren't. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and then this is the section that's why it matters. Um, social isolation has been shown to be a problem in older adults all over the country, um, but specifically in rural areas. And that's been worsened this past year because of COVID. So you're not getting out. Normally, maybe you don't have um, transportation. Maybe you're too old to drive. Your eyes have gone bad. Any, any kind of thing like that can keep a person in the house. Um, in urban areas, there may be ways around that. You might can walk to a senior center or take a bus to your, uh, to your doctor's appointment, but that's not gonna be an option if you live out in the middle of nowhere. Um, all of those problems were exasperated further by COVID-19 because a lot of things were closed. So maybe your senior center got closed or you weren't safe going to the grocery store anymore. All of those things can lead to social isolation, um, which leads then to loneliness sometimes because you're not seeing anybody. And loneliness can lead to negative health effects, including depression, a weakened immune system, and a cognitive decline. Cognitive decline just being that your mental status may not be 
as good as it once was, which is seen in older adults very regularly, but it is further exasperated by um, depression and worsening physiologi uh, physiological health. Um, so this is a picture of me <laughs> um, outside the nursing building, but this is some stuff that we've done so far in the project. Our uh, first step was getting it funded because printing and mailing costs are more than you think they're going to be since it's just paper, uh, but it does cost money. So we had to print the surveys, print the posters and print reminder postcards. Um, mailing costs included the envelopes that they mailed them back in and the postage for that and mailing the packets to the senior centers because senior centers are who are handing out our surveys and then the participants would take it home, fill it out and then mail it back. Uh, they mail it back in the return envelopes which we provide which had um, so they were self-addressed back to Dr. Smith at the College of Nursing and had a postage already on it so that it was no cost to the participants. Um, we got that funded using the Honors College mini grant and also from the College of Nursing, they gave us an allowance, which covered pretty much all the costs. So this is what the survey actually asked. So we started with a survey from the Institute of Aging from the University of Florida's College of Medicine. Um, the PubMed article is on the left side of the screen. We edited that down a lot and up a lot because we needed to shorten the length for relevance. Not everything they asked was relevant to our questions, but some things they didn't explain completely in their survey that we wanted to elaborate more on, especially with before and after questions. So they may have asked, how was this before your before the pandemic started, but they didn't ask how was it after the pandemic started or vice versa. So we just made sure that all of our questions had befores and afters. Um, again, this is saying that we have before and after questions, except for the demographics page. That's um, going to be the same pretty much before and after. And the health history is not completely all going to have before and after questions. But these are all the sections in the survey. Um, the physical activity speaks to their um, physical ability, as well as the health history speaking to that. Um, mood, sleep are going to talk about depression, usually. Um, Life space, again, is how often they get out. So that can speak to both depression, social isolation, and physical ability. Uh, and mobility, again, is physical activity. Um, the first step in having a project that involves humans is going to be getting IRB approval. So in order to do any research, at UAH, I'm pretty sure you have to have IRB approval, but it's especially important with humans um, because they are human beings and you have to be very careful with them. So uh, to get IRB approval, it requires a detailed application. It required some city training, which is just an online training for taking uh, research ethically uh, and taking care of your participants. Uh, we also were required to get letters of support from the senior centers um, because they were recruiting for us. Um, so IRB required letters of support from them. Uh, now recruiting participants, uh, we use rural senior centers in rural counties of Alabama. So those are pretty easy to find. You can pretty much um, Google a map for rural counties and you'll see that most counties in Alabama are rural. And then you can take that list of rural counties and add in the Google search um, so like Pickens County uh, Senior Center and find your senior center, find their phone number. So we did that, made a big calling list, called a lot of them and asked if they were willing to hand out our surveys. Those that were willing to participate, um, we took their address down and took an email address from them so that we could get the letter of support from them signed and sent to the IRB and then uh, eventually needed that for mailing them the boxes of packets of surveys. Valid question is why not just do everything online? We've done most everything online for this past year. However, older adults, specifically 
the ones that are on up there in the years, which we used anybody over 60, I think is the number that we, we decided on. Um, they're going to be much less likely to be tech savvy as a younger person, um, even less so in a rural area, because I mean, personally, I live in a really rural area and my internet is sketchy at best. So an older adult who's not really going to accept the internet and technology that well is much less likely to have internet access. Um, and those that do, uh, we're going to be a special subset of adults. Um, so some of the questions in the survey are about online socialization, like how much do you use Facebook? Do you FaceTime with your friends? Stuff like that. Um, and telehealth use as well. So having doctor's appointments online. Uh, them taking the survey online would have meant that they're already on a computer and they're going to be more likely to do those things, whereas someone who's taking the survey on paper may or may not use a computer. So it's to get an accurate count of, of those uses. Um, so this is everything we sent to the senior centers. So we have a large envelope, which is a packet, and then a small, the same size envelope folded up. And that one is the self-addressed and post one that includes postage. And then the survey and the consent form. So their consent form actually has mental health resources on the back due to the sensitive nature of some of the questions. Um, we felt that we needed to include resources for their local areas um, in case they dis discovered that they needed help or they felt like they needed mental health help. We sent out 180 packets to um, four different senior centers. Uh, at the end of May, we mailed out reminders about a month later and now uh, two little over two months later, uh, we have returned 18 surveys, so that's a 10% return. Uh, the picture on the right is the uh, reminder postcard that we sent. Them. So 10% is not great, but it's not horrible. Um, now, once a survey is returned, so this is something I did 18 times, it manually gets entered into Qualtrics. Qualtrics is an online survey software. Think like SurveyMonkey is something I had heard of before I had heard of Qualtrics, um, but it's provided by UAH and has a little bit better reporting software so that you can see your results in a more better way. Um, And this is the stuff that still needs to happen. Uh, those are the returned packets that you can see in that picture with me and a pretty stained glass window that's in the nursing building. Um, so we are exporting the data from Qualtrics into SPSS. SPSS it, statistics is a software package um, used to analyze interactive or batched statistical ana analysis. So the chart in the bottom is not real data. We have not done this yet. We are working with, uh, I think her title is a biostatistician in the, um, the College of Nursing to get the most accurate and most concise data analysis that we can. Um, SBSS is something that I have not worked with before, but um, she is going to introduced me to it so that I can learn how to do that. These are some of the results that we expect to find, but because we have not done the statistical analysis yet, we don't know what the statistically significant differences are going to be. So we expect to find an increase in loneliness and social isolation during the pandemic. Um, participants who exhibit higher scores of social isolation, so people that are more socially isolated are expected to be more lonely, and people that are more lonely are expected to have a lower physical and mental health. Um, those overall, we also expect overall a physical and mental um, de decline during a pandemic. These are some of the limitations that our study did encounter. So a participant base, just the, the senior centers that are handing out the surveys are also handing them out with their meals most of the time because that's um, what the senior centers are doing for their participants or for their patrons. They give them meals 
Um, and this may predispose our respondents to be of a lower income or living alone because they are receiving this help and this is how they're getting their meals sometimes. Um, we do rely completely on voluntary participation. There is no incentive for them to fill out the survey other than them being very nice. We asked very nicely on the cards. Um, this may lead to a particularly low responding percentage, which we did find that it was a little bit lower than we would have liked um, in a non-representative sample. Um, we did have somewhat of a non-representative sample in that our um, respondents were mostly female, which is not um, uncommon considering their age. Women do tend to live longer than men. However, we also had a much higher percentage of African-American respondents than other races, which is not particularly accurate for rural Alabama. Um, the limitations of questions. So to keep the survey printable and fill, fill outable, um, it, we needed to keep it under a certain length. So it still takes about 30 to 45 minutes to fill out. Um, but we didn't want to make it any longer than that. So there were a lot of topics that didn't get covered, such as fluctuation in food and grocery deliveries and home health services and cancellations of doctor's appointments and checkups and things like that, which are all relevant and should be studied, but we didn't have space for in this survey. So uh, this is the conclusion slide. However, we do not have conclusions yet technically because we haven't done the statistical analysis yet but that will come very soon. And this would be questions if there were people. Do you have any questions, Mr. Cook? I do, I do have some questions. So okay. you, you said you talked about some of your expected results. So in, in some of those you expected to see, uh, I forget exactly, I gotta think now, that if they I can go reported more slide. loneliness and isolation that their physical and mental health will suffer as a result from that. So are, are the, I assume that they're self-assessing that? Yes. Um, so they're self-assessing their um, social isolation, their all of it really. Okay. Um, but the depression questions are not, like it's not, do you have depression? <laughs> Did your depression get worse? Right. It's a, a Likert scale so that it's, self-reported yes but it's not asking the direct question um, a lot of the activity questions for social isolation are how often did you go out and visit your family how often did you go to the senior center right. versus how often do you go to the senior center now or during the pandemic and it was the same thing for you know, like you say depression but you know someone might not have a good idea of what that means so did you ask questions like i don't know uh you know, do you have difficulty waking up in the morning or, you know, I don't know what some other symptoms of depression might be, but did you? Those are the, yeah. those are the questions that are on uh, a de the depression scale is how often are you, are you worried? How often do you find yourself that you can't be cheered up? Um, things like that. So it never really, I don't think the word depression is ever okay. mentioned. Um, that's, that's neither is I the word. The word cognitive ability either. Um, those questions are, if I remember right, it's how often do you have trouble going between two subjects or how often do you feel that your thoughts get cloudy? Things gotcha. like that. Okay. Um, so they are self-reported, but they're not asking direct questions, if that makes sense. Right. So you're, you're kind of feeling around by, you know, asking different scenarios, what happens, and then you can assess from that what that means on a health or mental, a physical or mental health scale. Yes. Now, as far as physical health, I think that is one of the only questions that is asked directly. It, we do have, um, we ask for their weight, so weight and height so we can get their BMI just to assess whether or not, um, that's a, a cofactor is if, if you're obese or if you're severely underweight or something. Sure. Um, and we ask if they've lost weight, if they've gained weight, uh, and do you how do you feel your physical health was before the pandemic? And how do you feel your physical health was afterwards? Because that is a topic that is easily understandable by most people where depression and cognitive ability and social isolation may not be something that they self-assess. Their right. physical health probably is. Gotcha. 
And then another question I had, I did you happen to ask any open-ended questions in the survey or were they all like her? No, they were pretty well all, um, not yes or no, but scale questions or, or check the box questions. Um, there's a couple spots for other. So their education, they were allowed to pick other, their uh, marriage status, um, race, things like that. You could pick other and fill in the blank. Okay, so you won't necessarily have to be like uh, coding, um, yeah, these open-ended answers or anything like that. Yeah. So you can basically do a statistical analysis based on the, what they selected. Yeah, we don't have a, a lot of qualitative data at all. It's pretty well all quantitative. Okay. All right, and then, and so what's the, what do you hope from this study um, you know, what would you like to see the contribution to be toward this situation? Um, I would say providing resources for older adults because we're contributing data that will hopefully, that our thought is that the, it will say that uh, a more socially isolated person will have um, worse, worsening health and worsening mental health. So hopefully that will contribute to providing resources for them. Um, but okay. Dr. Smith and Mike can talk more about that if I miss something. No, you did great. So yeah, that's what we're looking for is, is resources and other avenues that the uh, rural Alabamians, uh, older adults can use so that they're not socially isolated and their physical and mental health doesn't decline again or worsen. Right, so would you, would you... Another, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, if there's another pandemic or another situation where they have to be socially isolated. Gotcha. So so those resources, do you think, are, are like state funding? Is that the primary thing that's going to help those resources, even if it's like, you know, printing some material to give to family members to say, you know, if you have, um, you know, elderly people in your family, you know, please think about these things or something like that? Right, right. And, and state funding for, you know, we, we fund students who don't have access to the internet and we give them computers and stuff and, and older adults can learn how to use technology. Sure. Um, and that's another avenue if they could connect to somebody on um, FaceTime or, you know, Zoom or Skype or whatever the case may be, then they're still interacting um, with others. And so hopefully that would help alleviate some of that social isolation. Yeah, definitely. I, I can say my parents don't do, they don't even text, right? And so, <laughs> you know, my, my sister has to show them on Facebook, like, uh, you know, pictures of my daughter or my dog or whatever. And I'll say, oh, that's so nice. And I said, if you had texting on your phone, I could send you these pictures or, <laughs> and they're like, oh, we don't want to mess with that. You know, it's too, you know, it's like, all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's certainly some resistance there. So, but I agree. Yeah, we, we we worry a lot about students not having internet access. But yeah, this is definitely a population that would also, I think, benefit right. uh, from that. Right. So, because with those worsening conditions, we're increasing healthcare costs. So if we could decrease yeah. those healthcare costs, then sure, we'd be doing really well too. Preventative medicine, if we just caught go. on, yeah, we would save a lot of money. But there you go. Yeah, then, yeah, Dr. Worf would be out of a job when she finishes her, <laughs> her medical degree, so I don't want that to happen either. Okay, thank you very much uh, for your time. This is really interesting. I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah. Thank you. I'm good.